Now you notice that you've been given a board with many different pieces on it. Uh, one of those pieces, the black circle that's about uh, two centimeters or a centimeter and a half in a diameter, is a piezo buzzer. This thing can make noise. And we're going to go ahead and see how that works. The first thing you need to do is um, let's figure out what command in RGBlock will make this thing work. And that is the tone command. You'll notice that for the tone command there are three different options. We're, we're going to be using a combination of the tone here and our pin our buzzer is hooked up to pin 2 so we're going to go ahead and hook this up to pin 2 and then we're going to want it to play for a second and then we will uh, go ahead and ask it to um, we want to turn that tone off so go to no tone and again, make sure it's pinned too. Now, here's a great opportunity to use that infinite loop uh, because this will keep playing it over and over and over again um, if, you, um, if you don't let it, if you don't do anything differently, just because this is already in a loop. So it will keep uh, doing that over and over again. So let's go ahead and we can put, first of all, just a delay right after here and then control we'll do while we'll do the same one we did before while and we while this and let's just go ahead and uh, clone this while two is we can do this one two is equal to two it'll have the same effect as one equal to one and while that's true we'll just uh, do a delay okay so go ahead and upload that to your Arduino and you should get a single beep okay so that was a quick introduction to the, the piezo buzzer let's say that instead of just wanting to do a single monotone beep you wanted to make it more like a siren where it started low and went to a higher pitch so in order to do something like that uh, you would probably want to play one tone for a short period of time and then um, then we'll do a higher tone for a period of time so we can go to um, 540 Hertz and then we can do um, an even higher pitch so we'll go to 640 and we'll go ahead and upload that to Arduino. And um, before we do that, let's go ahead and just put that in there so it'll stop it at the end. And go ahead and upload that to Arduino. And let's see what it does. Okay, so you should have heard three distinct beeps. And if you didn't put this in, you probably are still hearing three distinct beeps. So what you can do is just pull this out real quickly and um, upload that to the blank program to your Arduino and that'll get it to stop. All right. I wouldn't recommend unplugging it each time because then you'll run into communications port. Your COM port will, uh, might uh, not function properly. So here we have the three tones. Um, what happens if you wanted to do 10? All right, I'm gonna pause it and while I pause it, uh, I'm gonna put 10 on there. I want you to do the same thing on yours, each time incrementing your frequency up by 100. So here's what I've come up with. Um, you can see that it's quickly getting a little cumbersome and uh, starting to take up a lot of real estate here and it's getting a little difficult to uh, navigate around this program. Um, you go ahead and upload it. You should see here um, some nice distinct tones as it gets higher and higher. Um, but let's suppose a couple of things. Let's suppose um, instead of doing 10 increments, you wanted to do 100 increments, right? In this case, uh, 10 was doable. I mean, we probably didn't like doing, uh, we did, probably didn't like cloning this 10 times and changing each one. Um, 100, I guess, would be doable too, but it's sa starting to sound like it's getting pretty labor intensive. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, see what we can do instead of cloning it a hundred times but actually end up with the same effect. In order to do that we're going to have to use a variable and the variable is going to be 
um, for our frequency. So we'll go ahead over to our variable section and we'll declare an integer variable. We'll call it frequency. And let's go ahead and start it at the same value as we did before. All right, it's 440. And let's pull off one of these right here. And we're going to do a repeat command. All right. And so we can, first of all, we'll start off uh, doing the same thing we did before, right, 10 times. And we start uh, with a frequency. And in this case, we're going to want our frequency to start with the variable. Right? And then after it plays this, we're going to want to change the value of the variable. So we'll go ahead and clone it. And we don't want frequency to equal 440 anymore. What we want it to equal is whatever frequency was, all right, plus one hundred. So what this means is that the first time it goes through this frequency will be um, four hundred and forty. Then we'll take uh, the variable variable frequency, and we'll take four forty and add one hundred. So now frequency will be 540. So it'll go through here and it'll play 540. And then it'll take 540 and add 100 and it'll play through again and do 640. So basically we're, we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with all these blocks here. But yet we're going to, um, yet we're going to do it with just these few blocks. And before we run this, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to, um, end this off with an infinite loop so that um, so that it doesn't continue to play. Okay, go ahead and upload this to your Arduino. And let's see what the result is. All right, you should have found that it did the exact same thing. If you want to hear it again real quickly, you can press the reset button on your Arduino and that'll reboot it and it'll play it one more time. The next thing is what if we wanted to do this a hundred times? Right, and instead of um, increments of um, 100 hertz, we did it in increments of 10 hertz, and we did this in 25 milliseconds. So it should take the same amount of time, but we're going to have finer steps, smaller steps between each frequency. So you can go ahead and upload that to your Arduino and see what the. All right, now you can only imagine that that change would have been much more difficult and time consuming if you had actually had to go in and change each one of these values and create a hundred of these tone, no tone combinations. All right, so the loop has really saved us a lot of labor there with that. I want you to go ahead and um, explain how this program works and the previous program by using flowcharts. All right. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, please be sure to ask me if you have any questions. Thank you.